What's going on guys? Welcome back to Lucky Crit, and today we finally have a really amazing announcement. A lot of you probably already know this because the characters have since been released, however we finally got our first Sacred Stones banner in Fire Emblem Heroes. Like many other players, I was eagerly anticipating more Sacred Stones characters being added to the game, so I'm super excited for this. So let's take a look at what these new characters have in store for Fire Emblem Heroes. I can't even describe the nostalgia that I get hearing that music. First up, we have Rose of the War, Amelia. <laughs> this is making me a little self-conscious. Amelia is a super interesting new Armor Knight character. She comes with the Slaying Axe, which is a brand new version of the Killing Axe, obviously better like we talked about last time, Sacred Cowl, Earth Boost, in which I usually say that the boost skills are kind of misplaced on some characters, and it does seem a little weird here on her, but she also has Armor March 3. Now before these characters actually went live in the game, I was kind of wondering if Amelia was just going to be a fodder character or an actually amazing unit, and it turns out that she's actually pretty darn amazing, and not only because of this skill. So this skill is Armor March 3, so basically how this works is if Amelia is next to another Armor Knight unit, they'll both be able to move up to two spaces instead of their usual one space. So this is a total game changer for Armor Emblem teams. Amelia is going to be a brand new staple for these teams, and it's going to allow them to move and cover a lot more distance than their usual one movement, which is super restrictive. But as I also found out upon release, Amelia's stats are also incredible for what she is. It seems the whole villager general concept has certainly affected her here as well. 47 HP, 48 attack, 34 speed, 35 defense, 23 resistance, at level 40, 5 stars, which is ridiculous. That speed on an armor knight alongside the attack and defense, I mean, there's not even a bad stat here that they took points from. Her base stat total is jacked, which is incredible. Now, armor knight units tend to have higher base stat totals in general because they are restricted to that one movement space, and they kind of need it, to be honest. They're still usually pretty weak to mages, but Amelia all around just seems pretty phenomenal. And this is even before we factor in buffs from Hone Armor, Goad Armor, and Fortify Armor, so she'll be even more formidable in the actual game itself if you run a team to buff her. Next up, we've got the Silver Knight, Seth. I answer Destiny's call. Seth is an interesting case here. I know so many people were excited to get him in the game and they were really looking forward to it, considering how he's kind of god-tier status in Sacred Stones and can pretty much solo a lot of the game by himself. However, they made some weird choices here. I kind of agree with them and I kind of disagree in a lot of cases. So. A lot of people were expecting Seth to have a Silver Lance as his main weapon, but to me personally, I think lately we've gotten way too many Blue Lance Cavalry units in the game, and so I'm kind of excited to see that he's a Red Sword user. However, it seems like they kind of went with a more defensive, tanky Cavalry build here for him, and it's a sort of a weird build alongside his stats. So he comes with the Ruby Sword Plus, which I think is kind of a weird choice uh, on top of everything else. Maybe I expected more of a, of a Silver Sword or, or some kind of other custom weapon, but that just seems kind of strange to begin with. Swap is pretty standard on Red Sword Cavalry units. Fortress Defense for the extra defense, and also Seal Attack and Defense 2 to debuff enemies, which I think altogether is sort of weird. He's probably the least exceptional unit in this banner, unfortunately. However, that doesn't mean that he's straight up garbage. You know, especially on a Horse Emblem team, he could still be good. If we take a look at his stats here, he's got 37 HP, 41 Attack, 31 Speed, 37 defense, and 22 resistance as a level 40 neutral IV. So not the greatest, but at least he's not going to get doubled like Xander will. He doesn't have the distant counter built into his weapon, of course, so he's kind of not as good in that sense. So that doesn't mean he's going to be awful, but he certainly could have been a little bit better. And he'll probably be a prime candidate to become a four star after this banner ends. So if you want to pull for Seth, you might consider waiting. Next up, we've got the Regal Strategician, Innis. I am no ordinary archer. I am Prince Innis of Fralia. Innis is another super interesting character. As the Prince of Fralia, he comes with the legendary weapon Nidhogg, which has a bit of an Owl Tome effect, granting attack, speed, defense, and resistance boosts based on the number of adjacent allies times two. And with the rest of his skills, we can kind of see where his build is going. So he has Iceberg as a special, which kind of implies that he's going to be pretty beefy as far as resistance goes, and he also has Fortress Resistance, granting plus five resistance and attack minus three. So he takes a little bit of an attack debuff for that extra resistance, and he also has Cancel Affinity 3, the skill that we saw that was a brand new skill on Matilda that's basically there to counter the whole Triangle Adept, uh, potentially Horse Emblem characters, anybody using Raven Tomes, that sort of thing. As far as his stats go, he's pretty much on par with most of the archers. I think he's slightly below Bride Cordelia in terms of offenses and speed. So at level 40 stats, we're looking at 35 HP, 44 attack, 34 speed, 
14 defense, and 36 resistance. So obviously quite beefy on the resistance. He's going to be a bit of a mage killer, it looks like. And his stats are honestly much better than Niles. He seems to be a bit more of an offensive version of Niles. And also, you know, with his legendary weapon, so just much better in general. So he seems like a pretty solid archer. Against enemies with actual defense, I'm not sure he'll be that amazing. But since the meta is pretty mage heavy right now, he seems to be a pretty solid choice as a mage killing archer. And if you're looking for that on your arena team, then he's certainly a pretty good option. Thanks for the opening. And last but not least, we have the Winged Princess, Tana. Am I a little bit stronger now? I hope so. Tana is the Princess of Fralia, and as such, she also comes with a legendary weapon, Vidofner. This lance gives her a bit of a defense boost, granting defense plus 7 when she's attacked by a unit using a sword, axe, or lance, so basically physical units. She's got the ever-awesome Moonbow as her special, speed and defense 2 as her A skill, and she's also got a brand new C skill in Guidance 3. This skill reads, infantry and armored allies within two spaces can move to a space adjacent to unit. So basically what this means is that allies nearby can essentially jump to her, even through terrain like forests and anything like that, which is pretty amazing and honestly one of the greatest parts about her as a unit. If we take a look at her stat spread, we're looking at 36 HP, 50 attack, 38 speed, 27 defense, and 25 resistance. And this stat spread is also very, very good. Basically, she's like another Cordelia. However, I think this Reddit user phrased it properly in saying that she's basically a flying blue Lucina who can tank red physical hits. Like I said, her stat line is pretty similar to Cordelia, but she also has that amazing C skill that I think is going to really cement her place in Flyer Emblem teams and other teams in general too. Basically, Guidance gives everybody Wings of Mercy to teleport towards the Flyer as long as they're two spaces away. And this means that they can even traverse through forests and other things like that, which they normally would not be able to which is really, really interesting. I will help. Overall, I'm definitely super happy to see this banner. However, if you did pay attention to most of the characters that we got, you'll have noticed that for the most part, these are essentially characters that have a bigger role on Erica's route throughout the story. And we also know from an official screenshot featuring the catalog of heroes that there should be about four more units that they're working on adding into the game because it did show an increased total that is higher than what we have now. I think what this is going to mean is that we'll probably see an F-Frame character banner around the time of the Valter Grand Hero battle going on, because this banner is essentially Erica's banner, and because of those four other units, I really do think that we'll be seeing another Sacred Stones banner moving forward. Be sure to let me know if you pulled any of these characters and how you feel about them in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a solid and slash the thumbs up as well. Make sure to get subscribed if you haven't yet to stay up to date on our content. If you're interested in Lucky Crit merch, be sure to check out our Spreadshirt website where you can buy t-shirts and other stuff on there. Thank you for all of your support. You can also follow us on Twitter to find out any news and updates that get revealed on the fly. And I'll see you all next time.